Hello, and welcome to the Science Hutch. Today's science is error and uncertainty, but I'm not Science Hutch, I'm Science Victor. Salutations to you, my friends. You may be asking, what is error and uncertainty in data, and where does it come from? Basically, error is how far off your observed data is from itself or other computations. Now that you at least sort of know what it is, maybe it'll make more sense if you know where these things come from. There are two main causes of error in data. These can either come from an ill-defined experimental process, or data might not have been measured properly. To illustrate these points, let's say you design an experiment to test how long it takes a ball to hit the floor from the time it's dropped. Maybe you're trying to discover something about gravity. Who knows? Not that important for this discussion. Now you and your group decide that you're going to find your data by dropping a ball from waist height. But what would happen if you had a future NBA All-Star in your group and the shortest person in the class? Their waists are definitely not going to be at the same height off the ground. So a more formal convention must be established for collecting your data, such as saying that the ball will be dropped from a height of 1 meter off the ground. This experiment still allows for lots of error to be added by the team actually collecting the data. If the distance is not great enough, it may be hard for data collectors to actually start and stop their timers appropriately. This may cause each of them to receive drastically different data points from the others. But error could also come from using improper tools for a job. You wouldn't use a flask to measure out 5 milliliters of a fluid, now would you? It just doesn't make sense, because the flask is not precise enough for that kind of measurement. So make sure you consider what kind of tools you're going to use when you design an experiment. Now there are two types of accuracy percentages you will need to know. Percent difference and percent error. Percent error is the one you will be using the most, since most, if not all of the experiments you'll be working on already have formulas that you can use to predict conclusions. When you do percent error, you're comparing the value that you get from some math equation to whatever value you actually measure in your experiment. Let's say you're working with this nasty formula right here. Don't worry about solving it for today, but let's just say that you get an experimental value for V2 of 4.75 meters per second. That's all good, but what do you do when you measure the experiment out to say that V2 is 5 meters per second? You go home and cry because you're a failure and life is terrible, right? Wrong. You get to use the percent error equation which looks a lot less nasty than that other garbage we had. It looks like this. So what you would do is plug in the numbers, and you would do some stuff with this handy little tool, and it tells you that there's only 5.26315785% error between your calculations and reality. This means you messed up somewhere, but not enough to be too concerned with. Good job. Seriously though, you should only worry if you have more than 10% error. Percent difference, on the other hand, is a way to measure the uncertainty between two trials of an experiment. You should always have multiple trials for any experiment, of course. But how do you determine if the different trials are within an acceptable range of each other to know that nothing has changed between trials, which will later affect your results? That's where the percent difference equation comes in. So let's say that in an experiment, we are looking at how far a ball rolled past the edge of a ramp. And we got the two data points, 40 centimeters and 90 centimeters. These seem pretty far apart, right? They are. When you plug these two points into the percent difference equation, you find out that these two numbers are roughly 66% different from the average of the two numbers. Since this is outside the generally accepted 10% error, then either one or both of your data points are probably off. At this point, you should reconsider your experimental procedure and your data collection method, and potentially all of your life choices that got you to this point, and then redo the trials to help you get closer to data that is more accurate, at least to itself. Thank you for watching the Science Hutch's take on error and uncertainty. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.